Now your Storm Team 2 forecast first, sponsored by Hawk Law. Six o'clock, election day. Let's get you out the door this morning. We're looking for a few passing showers later today, but for the most part, the day will be dry. We're going to have some patchy fog for the morning. Polls open up at 7, close at 7 this evening. Upper 60s to around 70 this morning. Midday hours will be in the low 80s. By the time you head home, maybe stop it on the way before you get home. This evening, we'll see a thunderstorm chance mid 70s. By the way, today's high going into the low to mid 80s. It is going to be incredibly warm and breezy too with south winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We're back in less than two minutes with a check of weather and traffic together on the twos. Now, count on to live and local in the low country. This is News 2 Today. Fought and died for our right to vote since, you know, for more than 200 years. And so we have an obligation to honor them. We live in a culture now where people like to complain, they like to throw rocks, but I think if you aren't willing to get out and vote, what you believe, then I don't think you really have a right to complain. Today's the day. Thousands of South Carolinians head to the polls to shape state and local government. Polls open at 7 o'clock this morning. And while most of the ballots and questions are about who will hold office for the next few years, some of the decisions you'll have to make could result in permanent changes. News 2 is your local election headquarters, and we have you covered. Live coverage throughout the day as we roll in through Decision 2018. Thanks for waking up with us on your Tuesday. It is November 6th. I'm Brad Franco. And I'm Octavia Mitch. It seems like we've been talking about it forever, and it's finally here. Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> Thanks so much for starting your day off with us. We'll have count on to traffic coming up in just a few minutes with weather and traffic together on news for you this morning. But first, big news from Orangeburg, where police arrested six people after a deadly home invasion. You may remember this video showing a group of people trying to kick in a door. Over the weekend, authorities charged Stephen Bradley, Brandon Culbreth, and Daryl Sutton with murder, armed robbery, and burglary. Brianna Flood, Tamika Lopez, and Whitney Robinson were all charged with accessory. Investigators say the women knew about the plan and the killing. If you're caught up in this and it was cleared up before you got to the end on Cosgrove, here's what happened. We're working to get more information about a crash that tied up traffic for hours on the bridge there, just next to uh, I-26. Several cars involved here in this pileup. Charles County Sheriff's Office says it started when a car crossed into oncoming traffic on Cosgrove. Crews reported injuries ranging from moderate to fairly serious, but the good news is none of them is considered life-threatening. That was certainly not a fun commute for some of you here yesterday. Hopefully we can avoid something like that here today. The story for us here in the traffic department is going to be patchy fog and wet roadways. It was certainly, uh, I was seeing some wet roads here this morning on my way and to work. Right now, though, we don't have any incidents to report. Hopefully we can keep it that way. Uh, you can see if you're headed to 526 from I-26, you can see we are moving at the speed limit in both directions. We head on over to the Jedburg area, Knightsville, even Somerville looks Looks great for your morning drive here on election day. All in all, not a bad start to the Tuesday morning. You can see Somerville to the Mark Clark is a 12 minute ride headed eastbound on I 26, Highway 78 to the Crosstown, 18 minutes here this morning. I'll let you know if that changes here in about less than 10 minutes right here. I 26 West at College Park Road. Looks like things are moving along just fine. Josh. Good morning, Laura. Hope everybody's having a great start to their day. Really not much going on on the radar this morning, so let's walk you through the day today with our timeline. Our high resolution forecast model through lunchtime should a mainly dry start. There will be some patchy fog on the way out the door this morning. The big story, though, how warm it will be today with temperatures soaring to near 80, if not higher than 80 by lunchtime. We'll be in the low 80s by mid afternoon. Then scattered showers and thunderstorms try to move through during the evening hours. Not all of us are going to see rain out of this, but there will be some roaming around, especially after 7 o'clock. I think for the most part today, our 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. window at the polls is going to be just fine. It's going to be warm, though, nearing 70 already in many backyards this morning. Here's your planning forecast. 
Look for afternoon highs in the low to mid 80s. And 9 o'clock will be around 75, 82 at noon, 82 at 3. Mid 70s at 6, low 70s at 9. Notice the rain chance going up a bit as we head into the afternoon into the evening hours south to southwest winds at 10 to 20, picking up to around 10 miles per hour or kicking down, I should say, to around 10 miles per hour by this evening. Unsettled weather will continue for much of the week with some off and on rain chances each and every day through Friday. Generally above normal temperatures today, tomorrow and Friday. We're probably going to dip right at or just below normal during the day Thursday in the upper 60s to low 70s, but much cooler weather on the way for the weekend. And we'll talk more about that coming up in the Low Country's only 10 day outlook. That's in less than 10 minutes. We'll see you then. Four minutes after the hour right now, more than 3 million people are eligible to vote today across South Carolina. In the past, we've seen about a million voters on election days that aren't presidential years. But this year hasn't really been ordinary. News 2's Temple Ricky shows us what we may expect as she joins us now live from Mount Pleasant Town Hall as we get set to see a lot of people flooding there to cast their ballots. Brad, there are more than 50 ballots and 180 voting precincts. Now, this is just in Charleston County alone. If we've been standing here this morning, the parking lot has been filling up. These poll workers have a busy day ahead of them, 12 hours, and they're already starting to make their way into the building. Now, these polls are open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., and we could see a lot of voter turnout today. About 100,000 South Carolinians have registered since June, and more than 1.6 million people across the state voted in Election Day on 2016. Now, the record in a non-presidential year is about 1.2 million. If you want to vote, you need to bring a few, thing, a few things with you. This includes a driver's license, passport, or some other government-issued photo ID. If you forget your ID, you can ask for a provisional ballot. Campaigning is not allowed within 200 feet of a polling location. And if you see a problem, make sure to tell your poll clerk. Now, if the issue is not resolved, then you should contact the county elections office. Now, as you go over your ballot, you may notice that a candidate is listed more than once with a different political party affiliation. This is not a mistake. This is a fusion candidate, and any votes towards them will go to the candidate regardless of their political party. Live in Mount Pleasant, Temple Ricky, count on two. We're seeing the most expensive race for governor in South Carolina history. When you include the primary, candidates have raised more than $20 million. Governor Henry McMaster is running against State Representative James Smith Monday. The two made their final pitch to voters. Governor McMaster visited North Charleston Monday to drum up support and encourage people to get out and vote. In the upstate, James Smith met with veterans at a nursing home. Yes, we're going to be sure that 526 is built. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. Also, we're going to take a, a advantage of the brain power around the world to devise the best possible way to address the flooding that happens here in the low country. Hey, it's, it's just about, you know, continuing to make connections with the people of our state and, and to continue what has been a 46-county campaign from the start. Both candidates will be in Columbia today to vote and host their election watch parties. Berkeley County voters could change the form of government in the county today. Here's News 2's Raymond Owens to explain. Basically, voters will be determining whether or not to continue electing a supervisor or turn that decision over to county council. Currently, there is one elected supervisor and eight county council members. The supervisor elected by the entire county, council members each elected by their districts. The new plan would add a ninth council member, but replace the supervisor with a hired administrator hired by the county council. In Monk's Corner, I'm Raymond Owens. Count on two. Next on News 2. An unusual headstone drawing crowds to a South Carolina cemetery. Why visitors are paying respects at a phony gravesite. That's coming up. Stay with us. We're coming right back. You're watching News 2 Today.